it's my honor to be invited to participate in the 2021 White Night Forum. Although the coronavirus has given us hard times across the globe, our collaboration with the Picho National Medical Research Center of, Center of Oncology was not stalled. I wish you all to success of the 7th Sun Pittsburgh International Oncology Forum and the rich prosperity for the collaboration between the two cancer centers. Today, I'm going to brief introduce the works that I've done in my department over the past 20 years on breast reconstruction. According to the reports by International Agency for Research on Cancer, in 2021, female breast cancer has surpassed lung cancer as the most commonly diagnosed cancer, with an estimated 2.3 million new cases, possessing 11.7% of the total new cancer cases. In 2020, new cases of breast cancer in China reached 420,000. Ever since the first attempt of breast reconstruction in 1895, the transplantation of a fist-sized lymphoma from a patient's flank, breast reconstruction has evolved immensely. And in 2018, NCCN recommended patient education on breast reconstruction tabs for the individual treatment of female breast cancer patients. The past 40 years has also seen a steady increase in the publication of breast reconstruction nationwide. In China mainland, the practice of breast reconstruction has also seen a consistent increase. In 2012, a questionnaire survey was sent out across China and breast reconstruction was performed in 4.5% of the total population receiving mastectomy. In 2017, however, another survey was conducted involving 110 hospitals across China, and the rate of breast reconstruction has reached 10.7% of the total mastectomy population. The Chengji Medical University Cancer Institute and Hospital, a huge leap of the rate of breast reconstruction was observed both in breast conservation therapy and breast reconstruction during the past five years. In 2020, in our department, 23% of our breast cancer patients underwent breast conservation therapy, while 65% underwent breast reconstruction. Tianjin Medical University Cancer Institute and Hospital now has the largest volume for breast reconstruction in mainland China. With the help of our breast reconstruction database and follow-up system, we are able to perform clinical studies and I'm going to further elaborate on our strategies and innovations of breast reconstruction, as well as our novel physician nurse integrated patient management system. System. We began the development of the breast reconstruction database back in 2012, and now the database contains data on more than 2,000 breast reconstruction patients and nearly 1,500,000 photographic recordings from May 2001 to date. The data comprise information on patients' basic characteristics, surgical treatment, medical treatment, follow-up, and digital imaging of the breast. The database provided us with a feasible way to evidence-based research and make it possible to stimulate standardized procedure and guidelines for breast reconstruction. For studies of the strategies in breast reconstruction, Back in 2005, we performed a small size study of 52 patients on the psychological impact of immediate versus delayed reconstruction on the patients. The study revealed a significant advantage of immediate breast reconstruction over delayed setting psychological. Apart from psychological benefits, a retrospective analysis of 115 patients undergoing breast reconstruction revealed acceptable post-operative complication rate and identified possible risk factors for post-operative complications. 
was done demonstrated the feasibility of immediate insighting in industrial construction. For the consultation for local advanced breast cancer patients, the sequence of radiation of reconstruction was one of the major concerns in the 2012 version of NCCN guideline. It articulates if radiation is indicated post-operatively. Autologous reconstruction is recommended after radiation therapy. In my practice, in immediate breast reconstruction, however, different long-term manifest patients were observed for irradiated autologous life. So I initiated a clinical trial on the finding of radiation and autologous breast reconstruction and published the results in 2017. Supporting that immediate autologous breast reconstruction followed by radiation was a successful treatment sequence in Chinese patients with higher but acceptable long-term flap fibrosis, but no inferior patient reported outcomes. The study was cited by the consensus of China's breast and plastic surgery and breast reconstruction in 2018 and changed the clinical decision making for the timing of reconstruction construction for patients requiring post-operative reconstruction. It was interesting to note that in line with our study, NCCN revised the deadline in 2012 and in 2020 to include immediate breast reconstruction as one of the options for patients requiring post-operative radiation to include more reconstruction types and and to reduce the deaths, we launched a, a multi-center prospective study on the effects of radiation and its timing on breast reconstruction in Chinese patients in 2019 and planned to recruit more than 3,000 patients. The recent decade has seen a booming increase in implant based reconstruction and in 2017, in Tianjin Medical University Cancer Institute and Hospital, the ratio of implant based versus autologous breast reconstruction was more than 3 to 1. After analyzing 905 consecutive breast reconstruction patients, we proposed the predictor both oncologically and social demographically and their coefficients, coefficients in the decision making of reconstruction type and established a prediction model for reconstruction type selection. To summarize our results of our studies, we propose the following strategies for breast reconstruction. For early breast cancer patients who have no indication for breast conservation therapy or have failed breast conservation therapy, immediate breast reconstructions is recommended. For local or advanced breast cancer patients, immediate breast reconstruction is an option when satisfying outcome of new advanced therapy is achieved and with the patient's consent. The type of immediate breast reconstruction is associated with social economic factors and ecological features. Implant-based breast reconstruction is first considered under permitted circumstance when post-operative radiation is indicated. Immediate autologous breast reconstruction is a feasible choice. Two-stage tissue expander followed by implant or autologous flap exchange is also an option. The refinement of breast reconstruction requires constant innovations. Tianjin Medical University Cancer Institute and Hospital is one of the pioneers in building a specialized oncoplastic team in the field of breast reconstruction in China. Up to date, four hospitals across China has e have established a breast oncoplastic surgery department. We are expecting more hospitals to establish a single surgeon team modality in breast cancer surgical treatment. We are also one of the leaders in offering individualized breast reconstruction, and here are the timeline of our first cases for each surgical type and the flight monitor evaluation method. 
limitations for implant-based breast reconstruction have evolved with the proficiency of our skill and the advancement of innovative bio and material technology. Early on, we offered implant-based reconstruction to patients with early-stage breast cancer who have sufficient, sufficient tissue coverage, moderate size of the breast, and with no severe ptosis. Later on, we realized a skin defect, large or small size breast, severe ptosis, and macromastia were not strict contraindications for implant-based reconstruction. Radiation, however, remained a relative contraindication as it increased the occurrence of severe capsular contracture by nearly sevenfold. To refine the preoperative implant system, system, we proposed a selection for formula and added a fourth element, namely the measurement of abdominal tissue thickness at inframammary fold into the algorithm in selecting the implant projection. With the development of novel biosynthetic materials, we were able to first utilize tissue-engineered a cellular bovine pericardium in breast reconstruction in Chinese patients. Up to date, we have completed 258 cases of reconstruction, ranking the first in the nation. The initial retrospective, retrospective analysis between a cellular bovine pericardium and a traditional implant-based reconstruction revealed acceptable post-operative complication rates, cost effectiveness, and quality of life with significantly reduced operative duration in the cellular bovine pericardium group. The result provided evidence for potential clinical application of a cellular bovine pericardium to a group adequately selected patients. To compare the performance of a cellular bovine pericardium and a telebra, we have designed a prospective clinical trial comparing the two products. The trial is ongoing and we have completed more than half of the required recruitment and we are expecting the end result. Apart from the above-mentioned trials, we have designed other three clinical trials regarding implant-based reconstruction and two clinical trials regarding autologous reconstruction. To increase autologous lab reconstruction is an essential component for breast reconstruction, especially in a radiated setting. Deep and muscle sparring tram are the workhorse flaps of our free flap reconstruction. We have also had our first PET flap in 2019 when the patient was not a candidate for implant reconstruction or abdominal flap transfer. To monitor flap for children, we collaborated with the physics department in Nanka University and used the near infrared spectroscopy to depict the flight flap oxygen saturation. A standardized oxygen curve was plotted in different zones to aid early detection of venous congestion to facilitate timely flight cells. We also had national ground support for the benchwork study on the mechanics of ischemic recovery injury of flaps. We have discovered cell reduction one, a class of small redox proteins known to be present in all organisms, play a flight protective role through redox regulation of reactive oxygen species. When radiation comes into play, where heaps of reactive oxygen species are generated, the basal layer of epidermis and the papillary layer of dermis are the main damaged layer in the early stage of skin flight radiation injury. The, radi the radiated flight can be protected by precise replenishing the vulnerable layers with cell reduction ones. We have also discovered an extract from an original fungus that is widely used in Chinese traditional medicine. 
it judged its dermal protective role in skin fly predation injuries through a cell reduction one dependent antioxidant and anti apoptotic um, pathway. It doesn't have negative impact on breast cancer recurrence or metastasis. The effect ha um, has demonstrated its potential in translational medicine. To make the combined efforts, we constructed a physician nurse integrated management system to provide comprehensive consultation to the candidate reconstruction patients. We selected three critical time points for the preoperative management in hopes of delivering adequate message to the patients and help them with their final decisions on the executive and types of breast reconstruction. The new system helped us to reach a 65% reconstruction rate. We are also currently designing an ERAS workflow in breast reconstruction to allow close monitor of life perfusion and early recovery and mobilization of our patients. With the efforts of both physicians and nurses in the department, the patient reported satisfaction on the breast reached 96.9 out of 100, and the satisfaction on the medic medical team reached 98.8. Due to the large population and the high incidence rates of uh, female breast cancer, we realized there are still a number of patients in need of breast reconstruction. Being one of the leaders in this field in China, we feel the responsibility to introduce breast reconstruction to more patients in need of this procedure and introduce this technique to more surgeons. We are willing to help these patients. In 2019, we established the Sino-Russian Oncoplastic Breast Surgeon Joint Research Center and built platform to collaborate in the scope of basic bench research and its clinical translation, conduct multi-center clinical trials and cultivate, cultivate aspiring surgeons. In a collaborative effort, our Sino-Russia Oncoplastic Breast Surgery Conference held since 2019 had seen more than 5,000 participants. In our influence, we are leading the several investigator-initiated multi-center clinical trial nationwide. We have also established the Breast Reconstruction Public Welfare Fund and raised the donation equivalent to 7 hundred thousand US dollars in approximately two years period, offering help to 90 patients and full hospitals. We have also studied breast reconstruction philanthropy initiative, spreading the influence and the skills of breast reconstruction and the comprehensive breast cancer diagnosis and treatment to six cities in China. This team includes oncoplastic surgeons, nurse, radiologists, radiation oncologists, and patients. We also focus on public education and made short educative and creative videos. The efforts facilitate the making of the nation's first breast reconstruction insurance coverage to elevate the patient's economic burdens and additional $5 original premium can cover for breast reconstruction fees with $3,000. Finally, to close my presentation, I'd love to call for the participation of our new international multi-center prospective clinical trial investigating the feasibility of breast mesh used in two-stage breast reconstruction. If you are interested, you are warmly welcome to join us in the quest. Thank you very much. I'd like to take any questions.